The world of entertainment has lost another one of its beloved stars with the recent passing of Barbara Bossen, who's best known for her role in the iconic police drama Hill Street Blues. Her portrayal of the tough, no-nonsense Faye Ferrillo captivated audiences and helped make Hill Street Blues one of the most acclaimed shows of its time. In this video, we'll pay tribute to Barbara's incredible life and career. Facts First presents Hill Street Blues star Barbara Bossen, dead at 83. Hill Street Blues was groundbreaking. While Hill Street Blues was not the first show of its kind, Stephen Bochco's 1981 series revolutionized the way police procedurals were depicted on TV. Instead of simply portraying crimes and criminals, the show's characters were complex and multidimensional. The program's realistic, documentary-style approach made it more authentic and grounded than the stylized shows that preceded it, resulting in immediate success. The series ran for seven years and set the stage for future series with a similar tone like NYPD Blue. One of the show's standout performers was Barbara Bossen, who had previously only taken on minor roles in films and TV. She played a key role on Hill Street Blues for five years and 102 episodes until her abrupt departure in 1985. She was never intended to be a series regular. Bossen was born in Charleroi, Pennsylvania on November 1, 1939. In 1970, she wed Stephen Bochco, who was then an aspiring screenwriter. Together, they worked to build their careers in the industry. Her debut on the big screen was as an unnamed nurse in the Steve McQueen film Bullet. She continued to act in small roles in productions like the musical Mame, some of which had Bochco's involvement. Initially, Barbara's character on Hill Street Blues was not intended to be a leading role. She played Captain Frank Furlow's ex-wife, Faye Furlow. But the producers were impressed with her abilities as an actress, and her character became one of the show's most beloved. Faye began as a stereotypical nagging ex, but evolved into an empowered woman. Sadly, after Bochco was fired from the show, Barbara also departed. While many attribute this to nepotism, she maintained there were other factors at play. Barbara's Unexpected Departure In 1985, her sudden departure from the show, after appearing in only three episodes of the then-new season, shocked both fans and the creators. She explained the writers were reverting her character back to a miserable housewife after she had worked hard to make her a more empowered woman. Though she was meant to appear in more episodes, she left abruptly after that third episode of the sixth season. According to Barbara, the disagreements over her contract and the direction of her character made it difficult to enjoy her time on the set. She also believed she was not receiving fair compensation for her work, despite being one of the show's most popular characters. Acting in the entertainment industry, especially during that era, was ruthless. Women were rarely given decision-making power, and those who spoke up were often quickly dismissed. Bochco was fired Even though he helped create the series, Bochco announced in March of 1985 that he was leaving the series because he was apparently, quote, invited to leave. Initially, he refused to elaborate, but years later, it was revealed he was fired by then-MTM President Arthur Price. Due to his cost overruns, coupled with the fact that the series had already managed to reach the 100-episode threshold that it needed to enter into syndication. Simply put, Bochco was no longer needed, but it didn't seem to bother him as he would go on to work on a variety of other successful TV projects. Her legacy will live on. Barbara Bossen's passing has left fans and colleagues heartbroken as they remember her remarkable legacy. Her son's recent tribute on Instagram reflects the deep love and respect that so many had for the actress, who was known for her boundless spirit and larger-than-life personality. Her role on Hill Street Blues cemented her status as a primetime star, and her portrayal of Faye was one of the show's most memorable characters. She brought a toughness and authenticity to the role that won her critical acclaim and a devoted following. While her time on Hill Street Blues was cut short, her impact on the show and on television was lasting. Her talent and dedication to her craft inspired countless others, and her memory will continue to be cherished by those who knew and loved her. Barbara and Stephen collaborated on several series during their 27-year marriage, including the 1970s spin-off Rinchy Brockelman, Private Eye, the late 80s dramedy Hooperman, starring John Ritter, and the infamous 90s musical procedural hybrid Cop Rock. Despite their personal and professional partnership ending in 1997, their collaboration yielded memorable and groundbreaking shows. 
Stephen was known to joke about his wife's name, quipping to People magazine in 1981 that it was spelled B-O-S-S-O-N with an N as in nepotism. But he also emphasized that he held his loved ones to the same high standards as other actors and actresses, and had turned Barbara down for roles in the past. Barbara, in turn, noted that the couple had a successful working relationship, although she sometimes had to assert herself in their collaborations. Her husband died in 2018. On Sunday, April 1, 2018, Stephen Bochco passed away at age 74 after battling cancer. He made a name for himself as a well-known writer and producer, having created Hill Street Blues as well as other successful TV shows like L.A. Law, NYPD Blue, and Doogie Howser, M.D. Hill Street Blues premiered in 1981 and initially puzzled its audience before gaining popularity and critical acclaim, ultimately receiving 27 Emmy nominations in its first year. Over its seven-season run, the show won 26 Emmys and launched Bochco's career, which led to dozens of series and earned him four Peabody Awards in addition to the 10 Emmys he received. The success of Hill Street Blues was largely due to the complex characters, quick pace, and overlapping dialogue shot in a documentary style. But what set it apart from other series was its multiple narratives that intertwined with previous and future episodes. In an interview, Bochco explained he always wanted to create a show with a memory, and it took him a decade or so to get there. Bochco, the son of a painter and concert violinist, grew up in Manhattan and began his career as a story editor for The Name of the Game at age 22. He wrote the screenplay for the 1972 sci-fi movie Silent Running, but the experience soured him on writing for the big screen. Bochco's memoir, Truth is a Total Defense, My 50 Years in Television, chronicles his successful career from his early days as a story editor to his final series, Murder in the First, which ran on TNT from 2014 to 2016. Barbara Bosson will be remembered as an actress who made a significant impact on television, particularly for her role in Hill Street Blues. She played a pivotal role in this series, which challenged the traditional format of television dramas at the time. Despite her departure from the show in the middle of its fifth season, she left a lasting impression on viewers, and her contributions to the series will be remembered as an important milestone in the evolution of TV dramas. She survived by her two sons, who will do their best to keep their mother's memory alive for as long as they're around. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Barbara? Let us know in the comments section below.